Hello and welcome to the LDM show. Here's another week, another excitement that's going to be happening today. Uh, my guest is already in the house. She's, she's a professional, you know what I'm saying? Or may I say a professional. She's here early and on time. Uh, so Miss Alba is going to be in the house. You guys are my uh, time. Celebrity death match, everything. But she's, a, uh, what I like to say, a special effect specialist. Um, she does amazing things. I don't know if I can do it, because I can't be no two, three hours trying to put makeup on, and I'm suffering because of, uh, I, I don't know, I can't be in a closed place, so if you put that mask on me to do, anyway, we're going to be talking about her, about all this stuff that she's doing, uh, and with movies that she's having and everything else. But uh, we're going to get straight to word on the street. As you can see, they got me standing today at, in the uh, the little uh, recording area. But um, what, what, what we got today in the streets? Oh, um, we got a newborn baby, which everyone is talking about, which is the, the new um, royal, the royal baby, the royal family. Um, listen, I don't care, Master Archie. My, he, he got a Mexican name. He got like 15 names and stuff like that. Archie, Gonzalez, Romales, Romales, Romales. I don't know. He got all these names. But Archie, I guess, is a good name. Um, but I don't want to really talk about that. I want to talk about the sister. Have never really spoken to them and everything. And now she's talking about, uh, in the news, we need to bury our hatches. Uh, we need to um, rekindle our love and everything. Um, excuse me. Didn't they just tell you not to be talking to the press? Because that's what caused you to have that problem with you and your sister. And now you're talking to the press about you want to rekindle your love. So right there, you just told us that y'all are even not talking. So there you go again, talking to the press after she told you not to. You know, is, is, is she Spanish or something? Because I got to get her the chancleta, you know, when the little half side of her, smack across the head. You don't spill the family uh, business out there. This is the reason why they didn't really talk to you in the first place. So um, you should have just, like, give a phone call and say, you know, hey, I'm sorry. Um, because of the baby, I, I, I realize we need to be uh, speaking in speaking terms. So you should have done that. But you just showed yourself again that you just want to be in the, in the whole light, uh, but you're still in the dark, in the darkness. Um, we hear a little titty tap, tap, tap. I don't know if I hear that, but that's... Well, my son in the, I tell you, when they put me in, a, in the recording studio back here, we hear everything. Um, but anyway, when it comes down to that, when it comes down to families, don't try to get into the light, uh, like the line light, you know, and all this stuff just to get back with your family because you're going to wind up back in the darkness. So, you know, look for a better way to rekindle yourselves and your family. Uh, that's the best thing. But, um, you know, shout outs to, to the royal family having uh the baby there was a picture that you probably won't see here but if you watch the youtube direct cut you'll see it where the queen is smiling at the baby it, it, what kind of thing is where a baby can change your whole outlook because the queen if you notice she was not really like big out you know i mean you know, my spanglish came out um it was not really close to her or nothing but in this picture Shows it all, like, hey, that's my grandkid, or, or is that the grandkid? Great uh, grand, great grand, right? Great grandkid. Uh, so, and then you see everyone smiling, and that's, that's their first kid. So maybe, you know, it will rekindle everybody to be great, and the royal family will, you know, not vanish. He's the uh, sixth in line, which the great grandmother was the sixth in line, too, and now she's the queen. So maybe that's the connection there. Maybe that's why she feels connected to him. I don't know. But uh, again, shout outs to the royal family for all that. But and then, uh, you know, tragedy did happen. I, I need to, I really don't like to speak too much about tragedy that happened. But this needs to get um, said. Uh, Colorado had another shooting. Um, one boy uh, died for trying to save everyone and try to, uh, like, get to the um, shooter, and he was just going to graduate and everything, so he's not even going to graduate. But uh, 
my whole pet pee about this is you guys, when the first shooting happened, you guys were, oh, the urban people, schools, we're going to put uh, metal detectors. We're going to do all this because one person bring a knife into an urban school, a knife. Y'all did everything. But I checked the record. Since 1817, all the shootings in the schools happened in your white schools, Illinois, Colorado, uh, what was it, um, Tennessee, Florida, Manhattan, I mean Manhattan, Miami, <laughs> not in Manhattan, not in Manhattan, Miami, but all these, since the 18th and to, um, in 2019, five shootings, and they were all in these white areas, so what are we going to do, and then you want to put guns on the uh, teachers, I can see you put guns on the teachers all there in the white school. Don't put the guns on the teachers in over here in the urban schools. They ghetto as it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't want to do that. You, know, um, you don't want to put no guns in their, their hands. They're frustrated as it is. But uh, what I said one time was maybe you need to get these teachers to come over here and learn from us. Because when one runs, we all run. We don't stand there. All right, Craig and Pete and, and Jim and Bill and... Julie and all y'all guys. No, I'm just saying, I, I got to say the white name so they could understand what I'm trying to say. Because if a person got suspended and he comes the next day with his friends and they all have like a suspicious look, you run. Don't be like, ain't that Billy? Wait, wait, he got suspended, right? And then you hear the shooting and you want to go to the hallway. It sounds like it's in this side of the room and you want to keep going towards the gunshot. Come over here to the urban. Yeah, that's my white boys. That's my white boys. <laughs> Come here in the urban. We have class Run 101. I'm teaching that class next week. It's called Run 101. I'm going to teach you how to run <laughs> when you hear something, okay? You don't run to the problem. You run away from the problem. You know what I'm saying? Because if, I see, if I'm in a white school and I'm a teacher and I see Billy got suspended, come the next day with his boys, I'm outside. Calling, the, calling the, the principal, yeah, this is Charles. Um, yeah, I just left outside. Uh, I don't know if y'all noticed I ran, but y'all need to run too because Billy's there and he got suspended. Bow, bow, I told you. Y'all didn't want to listen. <laughs> told you. But, you know, I know I'm making a little joke about it, but it is serious. You have to show people uh, to be more alert. Uh, it's just like some of the um, rich areas when they got in Miami, when they started getting um, burglarized because people were thinking they were okay because they're in a nice area, nothing happens, blah, 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 and all of a sudden they got burglarized. Don't wait for something to happen. But in this case, it's been happening. So what are we going to do? One person jumped somebody or, or stabbed somebody. We were supposed to already start taking precautions. When I looked up, and you can, guys can look it up, um, type in on Google, how many schools were shot. And they're going to show you from 1,800 all the way now. And, and I'll wait. I'll wait the whole hour for you to find one New York school. Since the 1800s? Come on. Um, that's it's crazy. And there was only one shooting in Mexico around 1900s. That was crazy. I was like, Mexico? What? Like, you know, what, the tacos wasn't good? Like, what happened? I don't know. But, um, you know, <laughs> because it's rare. You don't, you don't, really, you don't really see... <laughs> I know, I, I'm a jokester, but you don't really see stuff like that in Mexico. So I was kind of uh, strange when I seen that. But in all enlightenment, we shouldn't have our kids die because no one wants to pay attention, you know. So let's start paying attention, and it happens. Why do you think we say, uh, you know, oh, he went postal? Because a lot of, uh, back in the days, this postal guy went to the post office and went crazy and started shooting people. Um, here it is again. I don't know what his name is. Probably Craig, J Bill, somebody like that. But he got fired, and he came back the next day. And the people that got shot, I'm not making this up. Look at it. Well, white people, because you know why? All the blacks and Puerto Ricans, they ran when they first heard the first gunshot. We don't wait. And matter of fact, they were sitting down. One black guy ran right by them, and here comes the rest of the Puerto Ricans and black running right behind them. Not even knowing what's going on. They talk about it when they're outside. Whoo! Que pasó? Que pasó? Why y'all ran? Ay, 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 what happened? You say, I don't know. I see Craig over there. I run. I run. 
Craig was suspended. He got kicked out of the job. He come running. I run. I said, oh. Then here come the black dude. Yo. Yo, what happened, bro? I just ran. I seen y'all running, so I said, I'm out. I talk about it out there. You know what? Because, come on. Uh, us black people and, and Spanish people, when you fire us, the only reason we piss is because you let us wake up to come to work and fire us. You should have told me that while I was in the bed. That's what I'm saying. That's the only reason we get upset. Like, damn, we have been home, chilling and stuff. And then when we get home, we tell our family and friends, we quit. You know, we always say we quit. We never got fired. We quit. But we don't come back the next day and start shooting up places. Come on. We need, we need reference. We can't do that. We can't shoot you guys up. You know, we need the reference as much as possible. So I'm just letting you guys know we have to get more creative on a way how to save our kids. You know, with all jokes aside, killing our kids, especially the kid that was just going to graduate. Like, I don't even know if he was the first one to graduate out of high school. Maybe not because he's from an urban, nice area. I mean, I'm sorry, he's from the rich area. So he probably had family that graduated already. But if that was here, and which is happening here, but it's not happening in the schools. It's happening in the streets. So the rich people having kids dying in their schools, we having kids dying in the streets. When are we both going to get together and figure out what's going on? Because the rich schools should come to the urban schools and say, hey, how are you saving your kids from not dying inside the schools? And then the urban kids will go to their school and say, hey, how are you surviving not having your kids die in the streets. You see? Put them two together. Let's find out. Let's save our kids. Um, because I, I don't, I'm glad I survived that, but come on. You know, wh when are you going to grow up? When it happens to your child? And I'm talking to the uh, officials, you know, the people who are sitting down, pressing buttons and signing papers and cashing a check and only saying they want to help but don't help. I'm talking to you guys. Um, let's do something about it because this little boy shouldn't have been a hero and then died a hero. Um, I, I'm telling you, I might as well live a pendejo all my life than die a hero um, to save someone. M maybe I can't say that because your adrenaline your kicks in and you just like try to rush and try to help. So um, condolence to the family, you know, shout outs to him for try um, saving so many other kids. So your memory would never uh, vanished so you became immortal in the eyes of everyone else and in the lips of a child that's in that school now so but let's save our kids come on um, all jokes aside pay attention if you see someone that's not supposed to be there say something you know what I'm saying um, because y'all quick y'all white people quick to say who's who's hanging out in the streets I seen that black guy right there in the street yep that, that's that's him right there you know what I'm saying? So why don't you say something when you see somebody coming in that you know was not supposed to be there? They were supposed to be suspended. Uh, they got fired. Whatever it is, um, that's when you need to really say something. You know, because especially in the urban sides, I, I guess they don't do that. There's a code. You know, you don't go and shoot up a school. I'm not going to say it never happens, so don't put your guard down. Um, always pay attention because you never know it can happen. But anyway... Uh, that was a little bit of word on the streets. We're going to take a, a quick um, music break, right? Not a commercial break. We're going to take a music break. I don't know what song they're going to put, but just enjoy the uh, music as soon as she tells me she's keyed up. Uh, she don't know which music she's going to put. Just put anything. Why well, I keep on talking. This is, this is what happens when we live. But anyway, um, music awards. We are going to be giving two tickets out today for the LDM music awards. Um, and shout-outs to Anne-Marie, uh, I don't know how to say her last name real good. I don't want to mess it up. So we just say Anne-Marie. She's a 2018 country nominee, right? Yeah, she's a country nominee. She donated two tickets today um, for today. So we're going to be giving that out. And we have, no, she gave one ticket, I think. Yeah, something like that. But we have a secret person that donated. She just said she wants to donate, but she doesn't want her name, you know, because she just wants to donate. So that's why we have two tickets to give out today. So shout outs to the uh, secret donator. I don't know really how to say it, but secret donator. There's no really no political word to say. And to Anne Marie for donating the tickets. Go to the LDMRadio.com and buy your tickets. It's only $15. That $15 does not go in our pocket. 
that $15 go for the awards and to pay for the place. So no one makes money. Everyone is doing a volunteer. Uh, there's uh, performers. I think there's six performers going to be performing from you. That's people coming from California, uh, one coming from Canada. So people are coming from around the world to support the independent artists. So if you live right around the corner, literally, or in the Bronx, you should support. Um, and come on and check it out. It was fun. Last year, there was a couple people a little upset because they couldn't come in. Well, you shouldn't be upset if you didn't buy your tickets on time. You got to buy it on time. There's no tickets at the door. And if we capital, I guess the capital is 120, 130, 130 people, something like that. After that, you can't fit. We can't fit no more. You know, I don't want to get no uh, fire marshal bill or somebody coming in and stuff. But um, but anyway, are we are we keyed up? Oh, we go to the LDM radio commercial since we're speaking about it. But uh, I'm Charles Alamon. When we be back, we're going to be back with our guests. Radio station in the world. In the world. Is right here. Right now. LDM Radio. She's so fake. She's such a slut. You can see the layers on Look her face. Look at her chicken legs. <laughs> oh my god. How short is that skirt? <laughs> I can't believe she'd even put that on. <laughs> is that her dress? It's not even on her hardly. It's not even covering her up. It's actually disgusting. Oh my god. How can she do her hair like that? I don't even know how this girl has friends. I saw her talking to Holden the other day. Who does she think she is? She I bet she slept with the whole football team. She's not even pretty. She's gained so much weight. She looks like a cow. <laughs> Such a good idea. Watch this. <laughs> You're good. Oh my god, that's so funny. You gotta post that. <laughs> I got an idea past this. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the LDM show, and uh, I hope you guys watch the beginning and enjoy it. But now it's time to get serious. Uh, we have a great person here who pretty much made comedy fun. It was fun when we when I was watching Deaf Comedy uh, Deaf Celebrity Match. But uh, we have Alba here today. So thank you for inviting me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So, uh, we have the Latino power in the house. That's yes, what I'm so talking hey. about. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But um, I, I, I like to say the special effects um, person, um, meaning you do from puppeteers all the way up to masks and everything. like Animatronics. Yeah, and robots yes. moving. In the, I was amazed when I seen some of the, the videos you had on your Facebook page. I was like, wow. You do all this. First of all, what got you into this? Well, my father, um, he was uh, a DP or director of photography and cameraman for a TV station in Puerto Rico called Channel 4 Wapa Television. And he was doing that since I was born. I was born and he got the job as a cameraman. Mm. And I grew up in this TV station. And he was always, since I was a little girl, I... Iris Chacon, you know, I don't know oh, if you yeah. remember. Oh, my God. So I used to be Iris Chacon every time that she saw me when I was two years old. Yeah, oh, look at the little girl. Mm -hmm. And my father taught me how about green screen, about camera compositions. Mm -hmm. And throughout the years, my father has been a guide. And um, But then I just developed, he didn't want me to be in the entertainment industry. Um, even though I have some acting and stuff, he didn't want me because he saw 
he saw the the dark side at oh, that yeah. time 1980s 1990s how the the they treated young uh, artists right so my f I, I i was i became a fine artist i started painting oil paintings at 10 12 doing exhibits right. so i i was in the creative uh, composition sculpture uh, comic uh, design and then I went to school uh, in at the University of Puerto Rico which I I was doing a lot of exhibits it was more I entered via theater so I was an, uh, an, an acting student but then it's to be a director you have to navigate the whole spectrum of jobs you have to learn some music you have to learn uh, graphic art digital arts effects arts mm. And you have to understand even the acting, how to communicate with uh, the actor, the musician, the composer. You have different language, uh, lingo, yeah. per different uh, jobs making a film. There are so many layers, and you are a composer. You direct the whole uh, scenario and the, and the people, and it's just you have to learn everything. Wow. In order to, to make sure the whole crew knows and they are on the same page. Right, so right. the whole picture at the end, it will be coming to fruition of the beautiful work in, in conjunction with your crew. And in my case, it's my crew becomes family. We, we are family. We take care of each other. And we, when we have a film, it's meaningful and it has a purpose. And we are all in it all the way. doesn't matter if we don't get paid or we get paid low. No, it's right, part right. of the thing. But... I try to get grants and I try to get uh, the funding for the, our films. So, uh, when was what was the first, uh, let's say, the first animated thing you did? Oh, well, my first animation was when I was in college here at the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan, and uh, I did um, a, a cell animation. And then from cell animation, I started working on 3D animation because that was the thing, 1990, 1997. Mm -hmm. And and then a professor introduced me to stop motion animation, and I did my thesis in a stop motion animation. They asked me for three minutes for my thesis, yeah. and I spent the whole year working on it. And I did 20 minutes that I have to shrink to 11 because <laughs> it was a whole story. Sorry. And I, the, the professors didn't understand why a, a student could make such an amount of work in, s in a year. And the interesting part was DreamWorks wanted to see me and talk to me about my work. The head of DreamWorks hiring, the head of Disney hiring, wow. the head of Arman. And yeah. they all put me in this. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> they all put me in this. And, uh, they asked me if they wanted to talk to me in private. And I... It's interesting because they, looking back, they said to me, it's so unfortunate that you have such a talent and we cannot hire you. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, really, really, <laughs> how can you, as a, I, as a student, that you, these people want to talk to you. They want to make sure, oh, to tell you who you are, you're amazing, but we cannot hire you because you're a, a, a stop motion artist and they don't hire stop motion artists and it was so confusing to me and there's so many elements not only because because I was good there's other elements that I learned later on even now that m impede my progress and that element is being a woman and that what? element is being Latino mm. and uh, I have to break the industry I have to really break okay. and this the la past four years, especially the last two years, have been groundbreaking because I have been invited to the biggest uh, studios I with Wes Anderson in, yeah. in London, in Three Meals. I, w I was invited to Portland to Leica Studios by their own uh, animators, the lead animators, invited me to the studio because they respect our work. Wow. And the fact that they want to work on my film. These people want to work on my film. So that, is, that is groundbreaking mm -hmm. um, for doing things like that. So, um, what, how did you feel when you get the, I don't know if you got the call or did they came up to you when you did Death Celebrity Match? Like, 
Well, I graduated go? from School of Visual Arts, and I think they, they, they asked me to, to do some, because they give you like a test that you have right. to do, and after that you get hired. And it was rooms like actually this size of room, and you, you were closing doors, and that was you by yourself with the set and the characters. They give you all a tray of faces right. that you have to animate, and they give you what the, the voiceover is. And you are by yourself, alone, wow. in a room like this, with all these lights, the hot lights, because it, these, are, these are cool lights. Cool lights, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> back then, it was the hot lights. Yeah, I, I remember uh, back then they had the uh, fluorescent oh my goodness. lights that, you know, like spotlight type of thing. But uh, for, for, people, for people that didn't, um, <laughs> for people that don't know, Celebrity Deathmatch. It's still on YouTube. It is the funniest thing you ever see. It's two puppets, animated puppets. Not animated, clay-like. Uh, it's animated clay. Clay, right. Yes. And they're fighting. There's a rock is in there. Stone Cold is in there. Uh, they got down to... Um, uh, I think I did this Van Damme or Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Oh, no, it was, oh, no, it was Van Damme versus uh, Seagal. Um, Steven Seagal, I think. Oh, my was. gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, baby, it's yeah, been she's almost 20 back years. Memory. She's bringing back the memory. <laughs> when she said Van Damme, really? I was like, okay, it was Van Damme versus Seagal. Jackie Chang was on there. Um, they just made fun of all the celebrities. Which one, which one will you do one now? One now. Let's Trump see. versus. <laughs> yeah, Trump versus uh, his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what would be a good thing? That you know that she wears, Melania wears these big hats. Hat. And she can do like that, yeah, and like then she, she can take it off and slice <laughs> his head off. I'm talking about it was group. It, it, it's fun, but they were chopping the hands. Yeah, they took the arm off and hitting the. the oh my god, blood everywhere! Yeah, uh, but it was so funny at that time. But no one really realized how long and how much patience you had to make that little 30 minute or, or 10 minute um, thing. So anyway, we got a question from the director. <laughs> Uh, out of all of your work, which one was your favorite? Of the work, that's what I'm, I was saying, the one with Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone was a favorite? Yeah. yeah. Um, check it out on YouTube, um, Celebrity Depth, not now, when you finish the video, when you finish the show. Go check it out and you can see what I'm talking They're about. They're doing a, re a remake uh, of a new remake of, of the Celebrity Death Match in Vancouver, I oh, think, wow. in Canada. So it's, they're, they're trying to bring it back, Celebrity Death Match. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is we are just animators. Yeah, it is. But uh, um, well, if you're watching the director cut, you're gonna be like, why? You're <laughs> watching the video. I know, but I'm talking to the people that are live right now. Um, <laughs> 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 but uh, it was a good show. So now you went from celebrity deathmatch to now doing your own movies. Oh yes. Stuff like that. So how how did that change over um, take place? Oh well, when I finish um. The, the thesis, I didn't find a job because after the Celebrity Deathmatch, they canceled the show. So stop motion was not fruitful for cool, a good seven years. Um, and I decided because I'm, I have a, sculpt, a sculpting background to create my own doll making and doing one of a kind dolls that I actually saw all over the world to different private collections. And after that, one of my students, I, I used to also teach uh, animation at a school wow. and I I taught uh, middle school kids and um, I found f eight years after that that I taught these girls these twin girls and I found them again they were 16 they were going to college soon and they wanted one of them wanted to be a, an, uh, an artist because I inspire her Oh wow! so two years of you know I forgot th they left, they, did their, their, they were doing their masters by now, or starting to do the masters, and one of them passed away having a seizure in her sleep. And she was about to get married, she was uh, finishing her master's degree, wow. and, they, and, and I, w I couldn't cope with that grieving. Mm. So um, I created a story that I wanted to keep to myself, I just wanted to write a story about these twins that they... They are different. They, they, their twin died, but they, f they open a portal and they reunite themselves. You know, to, you know, they're again together, um, and it's a short story, science fiction. And I talked to the twin, my friend, 
Kathy, and, and I, I, I said, what do you think if I can make this a short film? And she said, please do it. And we oh. collaborated, and that film won many awards all over the world. Ooh. And I got invited to schools in Colombia, England, Mexico, to teach the art of, of stop motion animation. After that, um, I am doing, I'm currently doing another animation in stop motion about a book called The Dangerously Ever After by Dashka Slater and still in production um, and it's such a beautiful story about this girl that is very risky and she has a pet scorpion, brakeless bicycles and, and she's so... And this is all at home. Animation, stop. yes, stop motion. Yeah. And uh, you guys don't know, because you, you I, I hear it so many times, oh, what's taking them so long to do part two of, of you know, like a cartoon or something? Is because each second is a good, what, 30 to 40 frames, I think it is? 24 photos is a second. It's a second, right? Yeah. Here, we're filming right now at 30 seconds. So uh, 30 photos make one second here, and then I transfer it to 24, mm -hmm. which makes it more, a little more animated when, you, when you're moving around. Uh, for people that understand what we're talking about, you... But for you guys, we're like, what, 30, 40, what the heck is mean? So basically a second would, would be would, about two hours. Yeah. So yeah. imagine sometimes uh, I will have a take that is required 16 seconds. That will take a week. Yeah, it takes, it takes a long time. That's why a lot of people, when I, when I do this video, like when we're editing this, what you guys are watching, the edit video takes a while to do because we got to make sure the, the, the lower third, everything is correct. And... um. Matter of fact, I did one commercial about a hero with my wife, and she was the camera lady. But she didn't understand, like, what was I doing, jumping from one thing to the floor. <laughs> She's like, why are you jumping <laughs> up in the air? Like, what is this? Um, why are you snapping your fingers? There's nothing there. And then when we put all the special effects together, she was mm -hmm. like, oh, yes. now I can see. And that was only a two-minute um, video, and it took us almost a week to do it. We, we, yeah. filmed it, we filmed it in the day, but the, the put the um, special effects correctly and stuff like that. So. There's a uh, Trump <laughs> a skit I did with Claymation, and it's less than uh, a minute. And if you find it, it's go, uh, well, you, we can show it to them later on. It's a Trump skit that, y that you're going to enjoy. <laughs> oh, okay. So when we go to commercial break, <laughs> we're going to find that skit right there. And, um, and let's talk about the, also the, the new movie that I... Yeah. yeah. Well... well we're going to take a commercial break. I'm okay. Gonna come, we're going to come back. Um, we're going to play some music. When we're going to come back, I definitely want to uh, hit uh, her new movie. I just want you guys to see where she's coming from to understand where she's going to be going. So, uh, and then we're going to try to find that Trump thing. But He's we'll be me. right back. You ready? He's okay. We'll be right back. Of loving me. As mighty armies clash in a struggle for total domination, the scales can be tipped by one man who has the courage to confront his fate and make a choice that will decide the fate of the world. put a lot of smoke in today. Wow. But anyway, we expecting a real superhero? I don't think so. The real life superheroes are the ones that are helping out in their community today. And the LDM show will be there to bring you the events and stories to light. Do you know a real superhero? Let us know. But for now, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Also visit our websites for photos, videos, and updates. But until the meantime, hey, I gotta be out of here. We're winning all over the country. We will make America great again. <laughs> Hello. 
and welcome back. We had to show that little real quick uh, clip there of Donald Trump getting his uh, head sliced, basically. Uh, it explodes. Explodes, yeah. His brain couldn't uh, handle it anymore. Well, he can't handle nothing. So that was <laughs> something that she does, those creative stuff. And then for the people that are watching, um, they say in Spanish, why they didn't see the video. We were on commercial break. That's why you were hearing only music. But now we're back. So if you have uh, questions, it's, the phone number is there, 347-640-3920. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching it live, call the number. If you're watching this on, on BronxNet, YouTube, anywhere else, don't call. The number is not going to be active. You're just going to get a voicemail, and then when we hear it next week, it's not going to make no sense. So, so call now. So call, call now. now, my friends. Or, Lara. or comment in the bottom. Um, yes. They, they will tell us what you said. But, uh, again, we were speaking about her past and how she got to uh, Death Celebrity Match. Now we're talking about how she's doing it in her own movies. Yes. Um, so you got a new one coming out. Yeah. Um, speak about that one a little bit. This one is um, Heather Hanson, Jim Hanson's daughter. Right. She owns her own company, Ibex Puppetry. Because some people don't understand. Oh. Jim Hanson is from the Muppets. For the creator of the, the Muppets. For the people that don't know. Um, you know, only us <laughs> old people. We probably, oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> well, Miss Piggy, yeah, Kermit. That was her father's and Why is it that creation. those are the only two that people say? Because they were the... Kermit Kermi was how he started. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so basically, uh, we were introduced at a, f at a convention film, fe film festival of sorts. And we kept being friends on Facebook. She's on Facebook. So one time she invites me to go to a puppet um, activity. And I went there and we started a friendship. And... As we start the friendship, she was asking me, you know, nothing has been written or, or made about the Taino uh, indigenous Native American right. from Puerto Rico or the Caribbean. And she asked me, would you, would you like to make a film about that? And I, at that moment, because I, w I still work, uh, have been working on the animation film, then after, I was thinking, oh, maybe I cannot, I cannot do that because... I'm on production. But then Maria, Hurricane Maria hits Puerto Rico. Mm. And then I saw the abandonment of the Puerto Rican people by the administration, oh, by the United States administration. And then I started doing research about the colonization, basically 121 years of colonization, and the injustices of the Jones Act. And all that is in this 13-minute little film about grandmother telling her grandchild the history of Puerto Rico. And the grandchild has, quest, has fears. And these fears are based on are we going to survive if we don't get enough funding, for example, FEMA. Or these are the, the people who, are, who live in the countryside, the people who live in the mountains of Puerto Rico. They're all American citizens and... 3,000 people died after he left Maria hit the road. So, basically, this film is about our Taino culture um, and how we're going to move forward. But also, before moving forward, we need to know what happened in the past. Is this, uh, it is a puppet puppeteer? film. And it's life puppetry. And my husband, uh, I created the story. I created the designs of the puppets and the sets. But my husband is such a creative genius in regards of animatronics. So my husband, uh, decided he, he did animatronics that goes in, wow. inter in the interior of the puppet. And like with the face? Yes, the eyelids, the, eyel oh, the eyelids, wow. the eyebrows, and, and the moving, movement of the eyeball. And also... Um, we have a puppeteer from the Muppets, puppeteer in my puppets, uh, and I was good. It was such an honor. And also, we recorded the whole fi the whole film at the Carriage House, that was Jim Henson's house Ooh. in Manhattan. So it was an honor. It, it felt like it was very sacred, mm -hmm. uh, sacred in the sense of uh, for an artist, a studio and a theater is a temple of sorts. And that's how 
I, I felt when I was recording there and we had Heather Henson at one point helping with the production as well, helping with the lights and right. I, I, an effect that we were going to do with the lights. And, <laughs> and it's so sweet when I look back at the video and see her collaborating with us uh, in such a very humble feeling and she's very soft. It's a beautiful spirit. Wow, wow. And is that out? for the viewers to see yet? Oh, there's uh, great things happening uh, at this point. First of all, it is going uh, doing a festival run. We won okay. awards. We are, no we are nominated. We, we are in official selections. But the biggest thing is going to happen in about two weeks. We are doing our Oscar run, Ooh. our Oscar theatrical run in L.A. Wow. This means that I, I, I didn't have the money to pay for, a, for the theater um, to show the film because part of the Academy Awards, if you want to compete, you have two options. Either you win a film festival that is an uh, Oscar qualifier right. or you do a theatrical run in L.A., paid for seven days. People have to pay to see the film in a, in a, re in a real theater in L.A., and after that, they give you a certificate so you can start competing in the summer. You can apply and compete at the Oscars. So that's what was happening These May 24. Back, back stuff that you don't know. Like when you watch the Oscars and they be like, and um, the award for a uh, short film, and you be like, I never even heard of these films. Now you understand how they these guys. It, it's not easy. You have to do that, then you have to submit an application, and, and you cannot show the film online f Until. For, for these reasons, for protection of the works. And there's another good news, but I cannot say anything yet, <laughs> but it, it, so far, if you are in LA, go to May 24th to May 30th. It's going to be in the Royal Lambert Theater. And in New York, we're trying to find a theater so we can show it here, too, because people want to see it. Yeah, I, I want to see it. I'm just, um, uh, we're going to have to start searching for a theater. To 30th. To it's 30th. a whole week. Yeah. Um, so you guys, if you are in L.A., go out there, check it out. Um, and if they do bring it here in New York, we got to dress and impress like L.A. does. Know, yeah. <laughs> you know, can't get go in there or get them and want to watch short films. Um, so, uh, but the whole thing of the grandmother teaching, I love it because we do the Puerto Rican parade, and I have not yet found one kid that can answer any of my questions about Puerto Rico, and that's sad. Uh, I can probably be giving out a million dollars, and they will still not win. Um, First of all, the, the one sad thing about it, a lot of people didn't know that uh, we were slaves. <laughs> they didn't know. They automatically, they said, no, the black people were slaves. No, we were. That's why some of the ships are, are Spanish, because, you know, they, they slaved the Spains and they went to Puerto Rico. They that, went to yeah, Puerto even, Puerto even, even co um, European, white mm -hmm. European uh, Spaniards were also the, the, pe the los peones, which yeah, is, the peones. Uh, they, they were not in high positions. Mm -hmm. And then we mingle, you know, all, all the poor, all the poor people, <laughs> they mingle. Doesn't matter what race it was. That's why we have such a rich genetic <laughs> yeah, and I, I think DNA. That's, that's, and that's where mostly the want to party when they, when we party, we party. Um, <laughs> With the know, bomba yeah, and the areto. <laughs> and the we don't dancer. know we don't celebrate again. So, um, no, but a lot of people didn't know that. They, you know, like. The uh, the ships they don't they, like name one of them they'd be like uh, Saint, Santa, Santa Santa Maria they, La Niña Santa. La Pinta yeah uh, and where is the ships now they don't know it's like these little things how did we get out of the uh, the uh, trades and how did we get our island like these things people do not know as what I call um, New Americans or American uh, kids from Puerto, uh, that are supposed to be Puerto Ricans. So. But, but remember, we, with the colonization, they're watering down our education system. Mm -hmm. In Puerto Rico, in, in, the, in the mainland of Puerto Rico, the education, the education system is not uh, teaching our history as it has to be. For example, we had this 
la, la semana de la puertorriqueñidad, the week of being Puerto Rican, of feeling who we are, o, of knowing our Spanish, our Taino, and our African roots. And what did the he Heller Keller was? The, 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 what, you know what she did? She, she, they ended it. They en she ended it. Yeah. We, we have that here. It's called the Puerto Rican Parade. Yes. You know, we have the whole week. When the whole week? <laughs> the whole week when people want to be Puerto Rican. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah, know your culture. Like, I'm, I'm okay, like, so far happy that uh, Americans want to put Spanish um, speaking classes mandatory. That's cool. But can you put the history with it, too? Like, you know. If you, you're going to teach the language, but you're not, you don't want to teach the history. That's kind of, uh, yep. you know, redundant. Like and we are 35, 35 countries, uh, Spanish speakers. And right. I mean, we have South America, we have Central America, we mm. have this, the Caribbean and Spain. And we have the Bronx. <laughs> and the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, but uh, yeah, we definitely need history. And for your um, elders that are there, um, sit down and give the history. I know some of the, uh, I talked to some of the elders, and it's like, oh, these youngsters don't want to listen and stuff like that. Make, make, make them it. listen. <laughs> Talk about it. What is the chancleta? Right, right. Um, get the, um, the nunchucks chancleta, meaning the, the string with the double chancleta. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a good uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, but uh, maybe instead of giving them food and say, here's a plate, Maybe give a history with the play. Oh, do you know where that? No, you know, no, 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 no. The old-fashioned way was if you want pasteles, you make pasteles. With the, and there was a chain reaction. You have somebody mahando oh the plantains. Another one making the, the yeah. meat. You guys don't see it, but I'm going to show her. That what? came from making pasteles. <laughs> My mom was like, make sure it's not soft. Um, I, I guess the llama. Or la, 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 la masa. The, yeah, make sure it's not soft in the middle. But it's, hope. it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> and everything. But what yeah. my mom said, oh, just put a pañito, move back. But God, cooking to do. Like, yeah, and then we have, all the, been. we have all the cousins in a table, mm -hmm. and we have a whole chain. So one put the, pl the plantain leaf, pass it on. The other yeah. one put the, the masa, which is the mashed plantains with yuca or whatever. Another one put the meat, and another one uh, make the whole, um, the wrapping. Uh, it's, it's a convertible line. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know what's so ashamed? Like, some of these kids now, 13, 14 years old, don't even know how to make a con gandule. My daughter does. You know, my daughter That's started, right. she made, for her class, it was, uh, I think it was a Hispanic uh, month, and she wanted to dress as a Puerto Rican mm -hmm. <laughs> with the traditional dress. And she said, Mama, I want to make arroz con gandules. And I'm like, what? She made arroz con gandules for 24 people, and she was, she was 11 years old yeah, she I, she bought the, the ingredients i didn't tell her what to do she downloaded her recipe she mm -hmm. bought the materials and she did it better than i wow well i'll tell you yeah. this much um <laughs> if you do teach the teach the traditional way meaning that we don't use measuring cups measuring spoons <laughs> 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 ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I, I, guess, I was telling my mom but how much salt you would you, you know don't worry about it you know, i'm like <laughs> okay um so, Un poquito de esto, oh yeah. <laughs> That's why they say if it comes out too salty, then you're in love because you're, you're, <laughs> like, you're like imagining and you forgot that you put salt. So that's why they say if it comes out too salty, it's because maybe you're in love. Do you know, I have a, a story about pana. You know pana? Uh -huh. Pana peng. Pana peng. It's a, pana it's peng. a breadfruit. <laughs> it's called breadfruit. You know the history about that in Puerto Rico and slavery? The Spanish brought that fruit to feed the slaves, black slaves. Because it, w it was a, a tree that grew uh, the, the, the fruits very quickly. And at one point in Puerto Rico history, when we were colonized by the United States, they wanted to eradicate that, that fruit from Puerto Rico. See, why? That fruit is as 160 vitamin C, 160 percent of vitamin C and fiber. It's perfect. It's a super power fruit. And they wanted to eradicate it. Wow. See, these things. I started, that's my research. I have to understand why they're, they're taking things from our islands, which has a beautiful, rich soil. And really, why are you doing this to us? Mm -hmm. The whole sugar cane plant, the coffee. And well, yeah. you have a comment? David Sanders says. Ah, David. Pastele assembly line, love it. Como haciendo un dance line. 
That is so true. Um, when I used to come home, my mom had the music playing. And used yes! To shaking her booty like... And I'm like, what, what are y'all doing? Like, they dancing on the line. So, yeah. These were the good old days when... Uh, now it's the, the reggaeton. Yeah, yeah. You know, like... Um, bum, 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 bum. And I'm like, okay. When I used to watch, like, my grandma and my mom cook, and they dancing, and it, it's like, okay. Even to make coffee, <laughs> you got to have music on. You know what I'm like? What? Uh, but now it's like the music and everything. We need to bring these back as a culture. I, I keep saying, like... Every other culture fights for what they want. But when it comes to the Latin people, I don't really see them fighting for the history to be in. Because they put Spanish to be one of the major classes in school. But we didn't fight for that. They just decided to do it because so many people were speaking Spanish. So what I'm trying to say is, like, if we would have fought for it, we would have had it a long time ago when, when it was necessary. Yeah. And now we need to fight that not to teach the old Spanish to the kids because they're not going to understand it um, because you have to teach the Spanish that are now, like nowadays. Uh, even Spain changed their lingo a little. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you cannot teach the old book way. Like Dora, love her and everything, but no. Some of the words you're saying, I'll be like, uh, no, that's not how you yes. say it. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to teach this uh, Spanish, not the uh, old ancient Spanish. And probably even the writing, I think they're trying to teach the old ancient way. Teach the history, please. Um, but again, um, I, I know we're probably running out of time, right? But again, check out her, uh, Albert's page. Um, let them know where they can get. Oh, what? Oh, your, your Facebook and all that. My Facebook, you know, Alba E Garcia Rivas, and or my website, fantasiation.com. And um, I usually put daily information about you know where I'm gonna be. Right. But yes, uh, I'm gonna be in LA. I'm gonna be at the Garifuna Film Festival. Uh, Garifuna is a very interesting uh, festival because it's about uh, indigenous, it's an indigenous film festival. And I'm going to do a t to teach a master class about activism and filmmaking because that's what I am doing with, with my creations, with my films. From now on, they have to be meaningful and they have to, it's have to tell the world a story that is, that is happening and that we can change, hopefully, for the better. Yeah, and... Uh guys that are looking I was going to wait but do you know the colors and everything on the dress <laughs> I was like wow we're, we're back in Spain and you know Puerto Rico <laughs> no. and all that you know what I'm saying like I, I thought she was going to go up and start doing this no this is actually <laughs> this is European but it looks kind but of like yeah, the color, Spain the colors, the colors and everything yeah uh, for, again check your history and find out why I'm saying the colors and the dresses that's the colors they used to wear and um How, las majas. yeah, las majas, uh, yeah. It, it was always like pretty much black and red um mm -hmm. they used to use it and it was en las castañuelas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that too i used to be like um i tested this one kid i said we have an instrument that looks like a clam that we hit together yeah. what is it <laughs> and they were like we don't have no instrument like that i'm like hello the tick -tick 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 -tick. <laughs> you know they used to do all this stuff with it you know, and then their feet together at the same time. Oh, that oh, was masterful. God. Oh, and the force and the yeah, power. I was in school when they had programs that they took you places. Um, they took me to a place where the lady was like, wow. da, 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 and then you see the guy like elegant. And I'm like, yes, how the heck you got so much rhythm? And what about tango? Yeah. Tango is well, so that's beautiful. That's part of tango too, the, the thing. Uh, and tango came from there, and tango is so, like... It's so oh sensual, it's gorgeous. Yeah, we... And there's and a story remember, on that, we too. we just don't have salsa, merengue, and reggaeton. We got other <laughs> um, dances. Cumbia, cumbia. Flamengo, flamengo dancing. Y cumbia, too, cumbia. From, Cal from Colombia. Yeah, we have uh, other dance um, stuff that, you know, we need to bring out. And yes. Not only bring out, but let the world know. You know what? We have four events every single year. I think I'm gonna probably make an event for a Latin culture event. Whoa! I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably do that. And like every year, just bring out some Latin culture of flamingo dancing back to even puppeteers. And I don't know whatever we're gonna <laughs> do. But I think we should we should start uh, get to the board and start putting this together. 
because we have everything else. We have nothing but woman power, which is coming up. Uh, Bomba plena, you have to put it there too. Yeah. Bomba plena. You know? A lot, yeah. Well, we know someone that does that. Um, yeah. Doris, her name Wait a is minute, Doris. I do that too. I yeah. even have a whole skirt. Yes, of course. So look at that. Baby. Maybe we bring them out. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> you put the drums, I put the, the, whole, the whole thing. The whole thing? Yeah. I'll be there. Oh, my, oh my gosh. I'm going to be dancing all night. Well, I got to say, pero. <laughs> but. We have to leave. Uh, but anyway, make sure you're making those arroz con nandules, patelillos, and everything else that you can make. And show your kids some history. And check out Alba's page. Especially the, um, the one that she's putting the mask on. That. Is that on your Facebook? That's page? my Facebook. I did oh a live God. cast of, uh, of our actor for my new film. Check it out. I was I was watching the guy and I'm like, <gasps> I couldn't even breathe because, and it was not even me. But uh, and she said, why well, it was two hours or something like that? Yes, actually, it's my new film that I, I just wrote, and this film is about the detention centers in Texas, and it's a horror fantasy. So we tackled that um, that theme because it's necessary, and I'm looking forward to do some fundraising because this story needs to be told. I'm choosing fantasy, dark fantasy and sci-fi to do it, but it's, it's a very strong subject and it's a very strong film. And it's a short film. Hey, guys, um, support your, your filmmakers, your independent artists and everything. Um, some of them have donation buttons. Click on those buttons, donate $1, $2, whatever yeah. you can donate. Because um, if you donate a dollar and your friend vote dollar, 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 all the way down. That the helps a lot. It helps <laughs> a lot. Yep. So... Um, until next week, uh, I guess, I think next week is our Skype interview, or is it the, uh, I know one of these weeks this month, we're doing a Skype interview to Alabama, so check it out. Um, is it Alabama or Tennessee? Some, somewhere <laughs> where the country singers are at. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it, but check out our calendar on the LDMshow.com, and you can see uh, all the um, places we're going to be and all the um, interviews that we're going to be doing. So stay tuned to next week. Be safe and remember, be aware of your surroundings and you can make it to next week to watch us. This is Charles Aloma. <laughs> this is Alba. He's got me. He's Bye bye. sobreviviremos. Nena, ven aquí. Los boricuas no nos quitamos, nos levantamos. Pero tengo miedo. Escúchame bien, Marabelí. Nuestros ancestros cuidaban y protegían nuestra tierra abundante. ¿Qué te pasa, Marabelí? Abuela, tú dices que los taínos existen. Entonces, ¿dónde están? Ay, bendito. Mira, hay una aquí. ¿Cómo se dice? Yo soy tajino.